Card number 51 from the 1953 Bowman Color set, which means that this is session number 51 of Card Room Live. It was Monty Irvin. That was a fun video to do back in the day, many years ago now. Uh, Card Room Live, session 51. It's been a while, um, and it's good to be back. Good to be back um, after a little vacation that I was on. And, uh, well, we'll get into some stuff here, but, um, if you're new to the card room live thing, I hope you'll introduce yourself in the chat, um, get to know others that are here, whether you have a uh, YouTube channel or whether you're just a card collector and you're interested in uh, vintage card collecting, you've come to the right place. There's a lot of good people that, that come into this chat. Uh, all the time, so I hope you'll introduce yourself and let us know who you are, what you collect, and um, who knows, maybe you'll make some friends along the way. Um, that's pretty much the main reason that I do this chat is just to give everybody a chance to um, get together and, and shoot the bull. Um, so whether you're here today, um, I hope you introduce yourself, but if you're listening to this later, um, I'm told that a lot of people will will listen to this in various scenarios. So whether you're on your way to work or you're on your way back from work, or maybe you're sorting cards, maybe you're searching for cards on eBay, maybe you're walking your dog, um, maybe you're sitting on the john. I've had somebody tell me that. Um, uh, maybe you're wondering if Impact Player will ever make another video. Whatever you might be uh, in the middle of doing, I hope you get something out of this. Uh, I hope it uh, helps pass the time. Um, sometimes it's informative, but if it ever is, it's by accident. It's usually just uh, whatever happens, and that's certainly going to be the case tonight. Um, anyway, uh, I always love to hear thoughts and comments. You can always drop a comment on the video. Um, and you can certainly reach out to me at bowman53channel at gmail.com. Um, love to get emails and love to talk to people that way. You can also reach me on Instagram. If you have Instagram, my Instagram account is Bowman 53 underscore Alex. So it's been a long time. Uh, you know, we had a, our 50th session a few weeks ago. I meant to do the 51st session and then I got super busy with an upcoming trip and had to, kill that. And so here we are finally doing session number 51. Um, and this is going to be a, a good old fashioned random session. Uh, it seems lately over the past 10 to 15 sessions or so, there's been more of a, a plan. Uh, I've had guests and it's been very planned out. And I was even planning things out weeks in advance where I'd have people kind of committing to Sunday nights. Um, and it was a lot of work and, and uh, you know, coming up with ideas and what we were going to talk about and what we, who was I going to ask. And it's been fun, but um, tonight we're not going to do that. Tonight's just a good old-fashioned random session um, where, honestly, what I'm hoping to do is to kind of get back in touch with the hobby, get back in touch with all of you and looking at cards because I have not been looking at cards uh, for quite a while. I just got back from a trip and... It's been a very, very busy couple of months for me. Um, several things going on, all of them good, no, nothing bad. But, uh, but the hobby has really had to take a back seat for me, and that happens some uh, from time to time. Um, maybe some of you have had to kind of put the hobby uh, on the back burner, uh, and if so, you know, share share your story. Um, it happens, but um, I'm I'm in a good place now where I have a little bit more free time. Um, I've got a lot of things done and I've accomplished a lot of things. And I think my reward is to uh, sit back and, and enjoy looking at cards again. Um, so I'm happy to do that with all of you tonight. And so we'll hop on eBay and we'll look, we'll look around and see what we can find. And if you guys are looking at stuff, I'd love to hear what you're looking at. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll throw the, uh, the uh, link into the chat. And if anybody wants to hop in and, and, and chat it up, we can do that too. Uh, I see a bunch of comments 
uh, coming in and I'll take a look at them. I'm, I'm purposefully not looking at them yet because if I do, I won't be able to keep my thoughts straight. Um, before we get started, I neglected to do this last time, so I wanted to make sure that I did it this time. Um, as you guys know, the, the 50th session was last time, and, you know, a number is a number, but, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a 50th session where I had some some people come on. It was just a, uh, a bull session with a bunch of different YouTubers, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, leading up to it, I had gone back through all the different sessions and, and had screen grabs of all the different YouTubers that had jumped into live streams over the past 50 sessions or so. And I put together a little collage. Well, I got a really amazing surprise in the mail. Um, like uh, maybe a, the day of the 50th session, I can't remember exactly. It was like right around the time that we actually did that session. And uh, I'll share this card with you guys. This is a card that was made by our good friend Nina S. And I'm not sure if Nina's in the chat or not, but this was made for me and sent to me in the mail by Nina. Um, and if you don't know Nina, her YouTube channel is Nina S. And so Nina took the collage of YouTubers that I had made and she turned it into a to a card. And, and as you can see, it says thank you here uh, on the card. Um, and I won't read you the card, but the gist of the card was just um, thanking uh, me for uh, just the community aspect of this and, and the community aspect of the of the uh, of the live stream. And so, Nina, no no thank you required, but thank you for for sending this. This is a great little keepsake from the community and from my experience doing this. Um, I'm honestly surprised that I'm still doing it. Uh, I think there are a lot better live streams out there and, and people that are better at doing it than I am, but I enjoy, I definitely enjoy the community aspect of it. And so thank you for, for calling that out and for sending this my way. This is uh, definitely a, a great addition to my uh, collection of YouTube uh, memorabilia from over the years. So um, wanted to make sure I gave Nina a shout out. So let me go back in here and see some of these comments before we go any further. Um, so very first comment from William Nerona. William, I don't know that I've seen you before, so welcome. Uh, greetings, Mr. Bowman. I've never been called Mr. Bowman. Um, I'm not sure that I should be called Mr. Bowman. You can just call me Alex, uh, but I, I appreciate it. I uh, went back and watched all your early episodes while waiting for this one. Um, go Phillies. Yes, go Phillies. Hey, the Phillies are worth cheering for for the first time in a couple months. Um, I always appreciate when people go back and watch my, my videos. Um, it's been a while since I've made videos. I do a lot of live streams, which is cool, but like I really enjoy making um making videos and uh i hope to get back into it soon so if if you uh found any of those enjoyable i'm glad to hear it orlando's here lou rock is here card collector jim rick is here uh william i collect vintage detroit tigers early 30s to 60s very cool william do you have uh, a channel i mean obviously you have a youtube account but do you have a channel and uh, uh, have you thought about making a channel if you don't? Um, yes, I can confirm that this gentleman's name is Rick. And I can also confirm that he collects both vintage and pre-war. He also collects uh, different type, uh, type one, type two photographs. Um, there's Reese, there's Ken, Peter's here. All right, we got, a, we got a bunch of great folks in here. Gee, Mikey is here, awesome. There you go, Ken, it's hard, it's hard to make videos, right? When, you know, uh, I mean, it's not hard to hit live, although sometimes you may not want to hit live. Um, 
but it's hard to sit down and make a video sometimes. Wow. Good to see you, sir. Very cool to see you in here. Yeah, definitely appreciate uh, that, Chester. Nina is a very thoughtful YouTuber, no doubt about it. Thank you, Brian. Good to see you. Yeah, uh, that's the uh, uh, understatement of the century right there. Uh, I collect Hank Greenberg. Father, son, vintage cards. What's up? Mike, Canadian cards. Oh, okay, cool. That's good to know. Uh, I can, I can, I can kind of guess maybe why you changed your name, um, which is a little bittersweet, I think. Tigers seven twenty seven. Hello. Uh, love Green Greenberg. Never thought about a channel, but love how you customize your videos. I also would love, would love to learn how to do it. Um, yeah, there's. I don't know that there's anything to learn. Um, I, I hesitate to suggest that anybody has any knowledge on how to make a YouTube channel. Um, everybody has their own way of doing it. Um, but I would think that most of us that have channels would agree that what's most important is that you have fun with it. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it other than to say, uh, you're not doing it right if you're not having fun. Um, so you got to figure out what that means to you. It's different for everybody. Um, and that includes like how often you make videos, what kind of videos you make, um, and what you expect to get out of it. You kind of have to figure out how you feel about those kinds of things. Um, and I would say if you're, if you find yourself getting frustrated or stressed out about it, some, something's not right about it. Um, it's gotta be fun and um not stressful so if you can find a way to to find that sweet spot then you're doing it right and that has nothing to do with um view counts or subscriber numbers or any of that kind of stuff i mean clearly youtube is designed to get you to notice those things and it's really tempting to make a big deal out of them um but if you do, you'll you'll more than likely not have fun. I'll say that. Um, when you kind of let go of all that stuff and just recognize that it's an opportunity to share your hobby with other people, you'll end up having much more fun. And um, the connections will come in time. Um, so th that's the best I can say. Aside from that, like there's nothing there's nothing to learn, I would say. Um, and then there's this, yeah, smartphone, press record, download the video. Exactly. Um, if Fisher sells, I'll change my name back. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I just really enjoyed getting to watch the Phillies athletics series, uh, which just wrapped up today. Um, I have a soft spot for the athletics. I always have, and that they're going through what they're going through right now, I think really sucks. But it was cool to see the fan base over the past few days, um, kind of up close and personal and all the chants and all the signs and the stands. And uh, I'm feeling for them. And, um, you know, I don't have any, I'm kind of like not really fully tapped into what's going on. Um, I, I have the general gist of it, but, uh, you know, I don't have any, opinions beyond that but i do think what's happening is is pretty painful even even as an outsider um and uh i don't know i guess i can just hope for the best whatever that means there'll be plenty of that tonight um and scrolling to scrolling to orlando uh, i know you missed it That's bizarre. That's really bizarre. Uh, <clears throat> love how you put music in a nostalgic tone to videos when you display your cards look so professional and something I'd go back and watch again and again. Well, hey, thank you because um, I 
when I make, when I try to make videos like that, I, I do try to make something that uh, I hope is entertaining and feels like time that you uh, had, you know, that you got something out of it and that it was entertaining and that you um, got a mood and a vibe out of it because I enjoy, I enjoy creating that. I, I enjoy trying to tap into the enjoyment that I get out of the cards and the time period that the cards come from and all that kind of stuff. So if, if that's what you're getting out of it, then I'm definitely happy to hear it. All right. Um, so what's going on in everybody's hobby life right now? Uh, like I said, I, I've maybe for the past several months, I have not gotten a card. I haven't actually gone back and looked, but I know it's been at least three months, if not more that I've gotten a card. I, and honestly, I have not even been looking at eBay. Uh, tonight will be the first night in a long time that I open up eBay and look at cards and I'm excited to get kind of back into it. And it's not because it's not because of burnout. It's not because I'm tired of cards, you know, far from it. Um, I just found myself so uh, caught up with so much stuff in my life, um, work related stuff and, you know, just stuff around the house and, and this vacation trip and, and just so many different things that it ate into my free time. And um, I just said, you know what, I'm going to put, I'm going to put looking at cards on the, on the shelf for a little while. And uh, knowing that I'd get on the other end of that and then I'd get back into it in the summer. So here we are. Um, but um, I'm curious if anybody else has sort of like been on hiatus and whether it's whether it's because of life stuff or maybe you're experiencing a little bit of burnout, um, whether it's collecting burnout or YouTube burnout. Um, you know, I, I'm always looking at and, you know, so it's interesting for me and, and for those of you that have YouTube channels, I'm sure it's the same. There's such a strong connection between collecting cards and YouTube now that I didn't anticipate when I started my channel. But to me, card collecting and YouTube are con so connected now. It's hard to separate them. So um, I've always got YouTube open. I've all, I'm always looking at my subscription feed and seeing what's being posted. Um, I'm not always necessarily able to watch the videos and sometimes I am, but I'm not able to maybe make a comment, uh, which I would prefer to do, but sometimes you just can't. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm always kind of keeping tabs on what's going on. Um, lately though, I haven't really been as involved as I'd like to be. Um, so even if I'm not on YouTube, if I'm not making videos, I'm still kind of, keeping tabs on what's going on, but I'm not as involved. And, but I'm curious if other people have, you know, like where you are with, with your hobby, um, with collecting and with YouTube. Um, let's see. How long did the Pee Wee Reese video take? Uh, thank you. Um, the Pee Wee Reese video was a video that I thought about making for years honestly when i finished that set a few years ago i knew that i wanted to make a video about that single card um but i sat on the idea for a long time and uh and just didn't get around to it. part of the reason i didn't make the video right away is because there was a lot of stuff that i wanted to look up and that was difficult to find in terms of information so i part of the reason i didn't make it for a while is just because i wasn't ready to make it um and then I honestly can't remember what triggered me to do it a few months ago, but I, I, I don't know. I just decided, okay, I'm going to do it. Um, and as I got started, you know, it's one of those things where you, when, once you start, things start happening. And I, I started finding the stuff that I just, for whatever reason, couldn't find before. Suddenly I started being able to locate the little bits of information that I was looking for. And, um, I, and then when I found the name of the guy who took the picture that like, that was an amazing day. Cause I didn't see that coming. Um, 
and that actually slowed the move the, the making the the video down because once i found that i had to add that and it, so it was an ongoing process um but you know usually when i make a video like that i do it a little bit at a time it's not like i sit down one afternoon and do it it's it's a little bit here a little bit there um over the course of a couple of weeks maybe you know one day i'll do the the voice one day i'll look for the pictures one day i'll you know and I'll, and, and i'll just keep working on it like that um and that keeps it from feeling stressful because it, it is a lot of work but when you're doing it a little bit at a time, it, it's not overwhelming uh, and it doesn't feel like work. It's just fun. So that was definitely a video that took some time, but um, I'm really happy with it because it, it was it was what I wanted, you know, what I wanted it to be. <laughs> Lou, I'm over here buying and drinking. Good for you. You're, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I haven't bought cards either, slowly getting back into things. I took six weeks off. Yeah. Any particular reason, Mikey? I mean, I know, at least I know from your Instagram that you've been pretty busy lately. Um, uh, incidentally, guys, if my internet is going in and out, um, when I got back from my trip, I discovered my internet modem had just completely crapped out. And so I had to get a brand new one. And I don't really know um this is the first stream i'm doing so i'm not really sure how reliable it is so if it's if it's going in and out let me know um hopefully it's not too annoying um i don't think i've bought anything on ebay for three months other expenses and bad exchange rate yeah fair enough um yeah i mean sometimes uh life uh gets gets in the way of the fun stuff and um and you have to be practical right um i mean one of the uh one of the realities of of collecting is um sorry i'm just trying to look this up here one of the realities of collecting is uh, we all have a certain amount of money for for our card collecting budget, and sometimes real life concerns have to cut into that, like Tony's saying here. So it's like other expenses. It's just something you're going to have to deal with. Dry bone, 1786. Not here yet, but I feel like I righted it wrong in my post-war rookie set. I have the 48, really the 49 leaf spawn but I just bought the 48 Bowman. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's really cool. Good for you. Tony, definitely not burned out. All right. Orlando, I spent all my money going to the National for the Friendships. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the National's awesome. Um, and I've only been to one National so far. I really want to go hopefully next year won't be able to go this year. Uh, I definitely will never forget getting my 53 Bowman mantle. But the thing that I will always remember most fondly from that national was just all the fun I had meeting YouTubers and hanging out and walking the floor um, and getting dinner and so on. And, and the YouTube meetup, um, that's, that's the good stuff. Lou says, all good, starting to buy again. I just had a YouTuber get together at a local show here in Florida. Tons of fun. Right. Reese, I've been refocusing and thinning things out for a while now, slowly and steady, but getting there. Okay, cool. Um, so refocusing and thinning, thin, thin, thinning things out is cool. What are you, what are you trying to focus on uh, now, Reese? And... Um, And what are you getting rid of to 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 make it more focused? Hello to you uh, over there on the other side. Yeah, I saw the. I didn't watch the video, but I saw that you guys were all together. 
Hey, Chris, good to see you. Okay, okay, that's good to hear. A little spotty, I think, but maybe it'll hold together. Yes, I know. You know what? I was overseas when I saw that your, your radio show was back on, so I'm very excited to to check that out. Um, let me look that up real quick. Is it still on Mixcloud? Oh, it looks like you started over, huh? you got three shows. I'll definitely check those out. Um, for those of you that, that don't know, uh, Mikey's a DJ and he's got, uh, a rock and roll radio show on Mixcloud that you should totally check out. Um, cause the music is amazing and it totally goes to me. It totally goes with like vintage card collecting. It's like a lot of great, like rockabilly 50 stuff. Um, does anyone in the group collect the old advertisements, cigarette, food, beverage, etc.? I found some different things. Um, ones that are signed by several Hall of Famers, fun to display in various colors and frames. Yeah, I, I bet you that some folks in here, uh, do. Um, I don't know if anybody specializes in it. And if, if anybody does, um, you know, go ahead and mention it in the chat. Um, I love those things. I don't, I don't really have any, uh, of them. Um, but I do enjoy them. Um, I don't have a lot of wall space and those are the kinds of things that like, if I'm going to get them, I want to see them. I, I collect old, uh, I have a, I should say I have a couple of old magazines, um, which you can kind of see behind me here. And I have a Wheaties panel of Lou Gehrig, um, which I, you guess, I guess you could kind of say is an advertisement, um, but the cool thing about that kind of stuff to me is that they're a great way to complement your collection, you know, just collecting baseball cards. That's great. That's cool. But to have other stuff that kind of go along with your display, um, I think can enhance your, your overall collection for sure. Okay. Very cool. Uh, and show number two. Awesome. I will definitely uh, check that out, man. Tony says, I don't collect them separately, but I love old ads and enjoy them as part of old magazines and programs. Right. Yeah. And that's the other thing about going through those um, magazines is that you can find all of the old ads. And even in regular magazines that weren't necessarily baseball themed, I mean, like when you're looking through magazines from the 40s, 50s, 60s, baseball was such a huge part of the culture that you're going to find baseball related ads in so many different places. All right. Um, well, let's see. What are we going to do, guys? Um, well, it's been a long time since I've opened this up, and I'm going to share this with you guys. Um, I've never, I've talked about this before, but I've never actually showed it. So I'll share it with you guys today. Um, so I'm sharing my second screen. Um, this little peek inside how I kind of try to get my thoughts together when it comes to my collecting. Everybody's got their way of doing it. This is how I do it. I've been doing this now for several years, really since I finished the Bowman set. Um, and I was trying to figure out what I, what I want to go after. Um, so the way I do this is I have three separate, um, keynotes if you, you know I, I use mac so i have a keynote but it's the equivalent of like a powerpoint right i've got three different powerpoints that represent the three different areas of my collecting so i've got a pre-war 
that's one. I've got a, a post-war, and then I've got um, what I'm calling the golden age of New York City baseball, which is like I'm mostly in the 50s and 60s uh, and like late 40s. I mean, you know, that's debatable. I mean, maybe it should be broader, but I'm, I'm kind of targeting the 50s mostly, a little bit of the 40s and a little bit of the 60s. Um, really kind of focusing on the, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Giants. Um, and I've talked a lot about this over the years, so that for those of you that know my channel, that should not be a surprise. This, The one that I've got open right now is the New York City one. And basically what I do is every, um, every slide is a different card. And it's just the name of the, you know, the player and the card uh, year and a picture of the card. And I've got my own system that makes sense to me as to like the ranking of the card, like, you know, where's, where is it on my priority list or whatever? And like, whether or not I have it, um, it's not, it, this is not a terribly complicated <laughs> system, but what I personally like about it is that it's not a list. It's not an Excel sheet. It's not just a bunch of text because to me, there's nothing inspiring about an Excel sheet. Don't, don't get me wrong. I know, I know an Excel sheet or a Google sheet is extremely um, practical. And I do have, I do have an Excel sheet for like my actual collection with all the information about the card and like how much I paid for it and what the grade was and all that kind of stuff. I have a separate sheet for that kind of stuff. But for, for me, when I'm collecting, when I'm collecting, I don't really care about that stuff. When I'm like looking for cards, I'm, I'm really most excited about the aesthetics of the card. Not, I don't really care about the grade and I don't care about how much I spent on it. I just care about, you know, do I want the card or not? And so to me, the whole point of the PowerPoints is to like be able to look at all the cards and like look at all the cards together. Cause I'm kind of like forecasting what, what's my set, what's my collection going to look like? And do I want all these cards and do they, do I like how these cards go together in a way? And so this is how I do it. And um, every, every card has its own, uh, page like like I said and um, the way that this works is for me is it's ongoing so I will constantly be adding cards to this um, whether it's like a card that I've never heard of or haven't seen before and I really like it I'll add that or maybe it's a card that I've definitely seen before but for some reason I overlooked it or I just didn't, for whatever reason, it just didn't grab me, but suddenly it, it has, you know, like, cause that happens a lot. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but there are times where it's like, you know, I've seen that card a whole bunch of times, but suddenly for the first time I see it in a different way. Maybe it's because um, another YouTuber showed it and they and there's something they said about it or there's something that like clicked with me finally it's like wow why did i not realize how much that card is so cool you know something like that so then i'll add the card to this there will be other times where like i'll add a card to this list and after a while it's i'll kind of look at it and say, you know what i like the card I, it's not like i hate it but do i really need that card maybe not and then i'll take it off the list so this list is constantly changing and to me that's part of the fun of of the collecting process. It's not, it's not just getting the card. It's like deciding which cards I want to get. And, you know, I, I like opening this thing up and looking at the cards and um, seeing which cards jump out at me, you know, because over time um, I found that certain cards will catch my attention uh, more than others, you know, like for example, um, and sometimes it's just a mood thing. Like I'll, I'll read like uh, the one example that's coming to mind right now is like, I read Sandy Koufax's uh, biography that uh, Jane Levy wrote. And that was like a, maybe a year or two ago. 
And I've always admired Koufax as like one of my favorite vintage players. But after reading that biography, I was just like really like thinking a lot about Koufax. And I, and I was like, I got to get his rookie. And like, I got his rookie at the time. So sometimes it's like that. It's like a card's just sitting on this list and then something like sparks my interest in that player or that card. Um, and it, this is all uh, chronological. So you can see um, there's just a bunch of 49 Bowmans in here. Um, and again, this is my New York City list. So this is all, you know, Brooklyn Dodgers, New York Yankees, New York Giants. Um, and it's not every card. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to get, I am not trying to get every Yankee, every Giant, every Dodger. No, thank you. I, I like <laughs> mad respect for anybody that does that, but that's not my goal. Um, I'm, I'm cherry picking. I'm, I'm picking the cards that jump out to me, the players that jump out to me. Um, sometimes it might be because it's a rookie or because it's a key year for that player or for that team. But honestly, a lot of times it's just because the card jumps out at me or I just like the look of it. Um, so the, there's not a ton of rhyme or reason to it. Um, Peter, if you want to, if you want to, um, I'll send you this this PowerPoint, and you can go ahead and add the backs to it. Um, I don't, I, I don't have the patience to do it, uh, especially because I don't really care about the backs, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I I want them to have backs, but uh, I'm I'm less motivated by the backs. We'll put it that way. Here's my buddy, Ralph Branca, and his buddy, Bobby Thompson. And this one is just so fun, Charlie King, Tom Keller. Gene Hermansky. I can't remember where I saw this card. It was, um, it might have been, it might have been a live session, honestly. Uh, somebody might have brought it up, or it might have been on a fellow YouTuber's channel. Um, but that's, I mean, that's what happens is like sometimes somebody will show a card on YouTube and I'm like, wow, that's a really cool card that I, for some reason, never noticed. Then I'll just jot it down and, and you know, here it is. Uh, now, whether or not this card stays on the list, you know, is anybody's guess. It may, it may fall off. Um, but for right now, it's on there. Here's an incredible card that I don't have that perhaps a few of you in here have. Um, I Part of me feels like I might have missed the boat on it. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, but uh, one of these days, hopefully. Um, that's a great question, Rick. When I'm at a card show, how do you keep tr track of cards that you need? Well, first of all, um, I've been to two card shows in my entire life. So one of them being the national. So that, that maybe that uh, reveals the fact that this is not really an issue for me because where I live, uh, we don't really have uh, access to card shows um, much at all. And when we, when there is a card show in the vicinity, which might be like hours and hours away, um, vintage is not usually a part of it. So um, I don't have a lot of experience going to card shows, which I'm, you know, I'm kind of bummed out about, and I'm jealous of all you guys that get to go to card shows. Um, when I went to the national, uh, I just had, a, I had a really short list. Um, because even though I, you know, I've got these PowerPoints with all these cards that I would theoretically like to get, there are always like, there's always a, a really short list of cards that, um, I'm really drawn to for whatever reason at that moment. Um, and so I'll, it'll, it'll just be like four or five cards. And I, I remember the other ones that I might be after, but there's always like a, a, a higher priority of cards that I, that I'm really drawn to for whatever reason, like I was saying before. Uh, cheers, Don. Good to see you, man. 
Um, I thought I missed the boat on the 50 jacket, but I was able to find one last year at a good price. The deal's still out there if you're patient. That's good to hear. Um, one of the one of the things I try to do every summer is pick up a big boy, a big boy. Um, and who knows, maybe, it, maybe it'll be the 50 Jackie Robinson. Um, so I will, uh, I will keep my eyes peeled, Rick. Um, and we'll see what happens. Hey, Mike, good to see you. I take a list to a card show and end up buying everything, but what's on that list? <laughs> um, is, is it because you get distracted or is it because that list is just like a list of impossible cards that you can't find deals for? Um, I'm curious. I'm not sure if you've ever done this on a video, but what about YouTube friends showing off their favorite card along with a piece of memorabilia of that player? That's a great idea. Um, it would it would take some doing, um, but like right off the top of my head, I can think of some YouTubers that I know would be able to do that because it's got to be somebody who's, I would say it's got to be people that... Um, are like player collectors or at least have a player that they're very fond of um, because not everybody collects memorabilia um, in this, in this community. Um, I think a lot of us have memorabilia, but we're not necessarily actively collecting it. Um, but that's a great idea. Reese, I had many cards that didn't fit my collection anymore. Focusing on only getting cards that I love and better to find what I collect. Still a wide range. Got rid of about 15 boxes. Felt good, but more to go. Good for you, man. Good for you. Um, yeah, that's got to feel. Um, that's got to feel good. There's something to me personally. There's something really satisfying about. Um, reevaluating your collection once in a while and looking at it and saying like, do I still care about these cards? Do I, am I still glad that I have them? Um, do I want to keep them? Uh, and the more you can say yes to that question uh, or to those questions, I guess the more, uh, you know, you must be on the right track. So, and that's a tough question to ask. Um, it might be a little uncomfortable and I think uh, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and maybe upset some people, but in this community for many years now, we all like to say that there's no wrong way to collect. Everybody says that there's no wrong way to collect. Well, she, yes, there is. There is a wrong way to collect. <laughs> there is, there absolutely is. Um, if you're not having fun, if you look at your collection and you say, what the hell have I done? that means that you haven't collected correctly. And I'm, I'm not putting this on you, Reese, uh, but, but I would say that um, it's a good thing once in a while to take a step back and look at what you have and ask yourself if you're satisfied or if things could be different. Um, not because you did anything wrong or because um, it's a problem, but because uh, I do think that collecting evolves and your tastes evolve. I know I know plenty of YouTubers that have said, you know what, that was fun. I enjoyed collecting that way. And it ran its course and I'm ready to move on to something different. And they they sell off what they what they collected. They got enjoyment out of it and now they're gonna do something different. And um, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a healthy thing. You got distracted. Yeah, I got you. I mean, how could you not get distracted? Mike, are you going to the National? Because if, if you are and you haven't been before, talk about distraction. Um, to totally. Jesse could definitely share. Jesse could do like an entire video of like, you know, is here's an idea, Jesse, if you're here or if you watch this later, a top 20 Dodger, your, your, your favorite Dodger cards and a corresponding piece of memorabilia. You could totally do that. Not everybody could do that. Um, 
Jesse's channel is Think Blue Seventy Seven. If you haven't looked him up yet, Jesse's channel is Think Blue Seventy Seven. He's a Dodger collector. He has his own personal Dodgers museum in his house. Uh, he collects cards. He collects memorabilia. He has an incredible vintage baseball glove collection, magazine collection, and he's an overall cool guy. Uh, Reese says, I'm so nostalgic, and that got in my way of letting anything go, <laughs> breaking down that wall. But yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we're all a bit nostalgic. Uh, we're all guilty of that, right? Um, I mean, we're all collecting uh, crusty old baseball cards, so we're all guilty of nostalgia. Um, and that's a a tough wall to break down. So as long as you're happy with the direction you're collecting is going in that's good for you man there you go it's it's reese approved uh so anyway so here's my here's my continuing list uh i got this duke snyder card and did a video about it i don't know a year or two ago and this was a card that i just like it was on this list and i don't remember why, but I became obsessed with it, and I had to have it, and I got it, and I did this whole video on it, and I still love this card. absolutely love it, um, but that's the way my collecting works. It's hard to explain, but I'll just randomly get really excited about a card that for anybody else would just sort of be like, really? That's the card? That's the card that you want? Uh, um but yeah, the Duke Snyder, Phil Rizzuto. I know a lot of a lot, a lot of you guys in this in this uh, chat probably have this card. I love. I'm a I'm a sucker for um, players leaping to make a to make a catch. Um, no no surprise. If there's a if there's an infielder leaping midair on a baseball card. Um, there's a good chance that uh, I'm going to go after it. Hey, Terry, thank you for saying this because uh, I forgot to mention that. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, the world would not be the same without our dads uh, helping us to be better people. Um, Thinking of my dad today, couldn't be with him today, but exchanged greetings, and he's having a great day. Uh, I have an amazing dad, and in fact, my dad is the guy who introduced me to 19, 1953 Bowman Color when I was a teenager. Um, so he's partially uh, responsible for all this, so happy Father's Day to everybody. Um, for sure, man. Um, William and, uh, I'm sure everybody else in here would agree with me. If, if you, if you, uh, are so inclined, you should definitely start a YouTube channel and, uh, introduce us to your collecting. I know we would all appreciate it. I'm okay with it, man. I'm okay with it. Um, and you know what, Don? I like kneeling cards too, man. <laughs> You're not alone. Kneeling, kneeling card uh, lovers unite. It's all good. Who doesn't love this image of Roy Campanella, right? This is like one of the greatest baseball card images ever. I mean, and they knew it at the time, right? Because it's on so many different cards. Monty Irvin, who uh, started the session today. I mean, of course, this is an important card, but I also just love it because it's just a cool design with those trees in the background. It's just really unusual. And I love this card because 
I mean, it's a fun manager card. Charlie Dressen is a, let's say, a contentious part of Dodger history. Um, but this is cool because, I mean, it's basically like a locker room. How many baseball cards can you say are like locker room baseball cards? So here, here he is pointing at a chalkboard. And what's also cool about this is you've got – some familiar names on here. Carl Farillo, Duke Snyder, Cal Abrams, Jackie Robinson. Um, who else is on here? I can't really make out who else is whoever else is on here, but I mean it's kind of cool to be thinking about this as like before the game and all the other players from the from the time period. I just found this one fairly recently, 1951 Topps teams, uh, the 1950 Brooklyn Dodgers uh, photograph, which is like a, a team card, super wide uh, image. I was not familiar with these. And I can't, I honestly cannot remember how I became aware of them, whether it was a YouTuber that was showing one of these off or if I came across it in a post somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one that I want. There's another, there's a 1951 tops teams of the Phillies. It's not on this PowerPoint cause this is my New York one, but I also want that one because it's the whiz kids. So Reese, I don't know if you already have this 50, 51 tops teams of the Phillies. Um, and I don't know what you're refocusing on, but maybe you want to add that to your list. I'm not trying to defocus you. Uh, 1951 tops. A lot of people are not a fan of this set, and I I get it. It's it's a bit repetitive and it's kind of limited. But I love this Branca card. I have this Branca, and I really really like the Monty Irvin. But you can only you can see I only have two here. I think I might have a, a couple more 52 or sorry 51 tops on my other PowerPoint. Um, but this is, this is a, an example of a set that I might go back and look at again. Cause that's the other thing that I'll do is like every few months, maybe, um, it's kind of random. I'll go back and look at a set with fresh eyes, I hope. And, uh, and kind of get reacclimated with it. And I'll just see if, if maybe a card jumped out at me for whatever reason, maybe it's because a player jumps out at me. Maybe I read something more about that player and now that player has more meaning to me or there's something about the card that jumps out at me. And so then suddenly that card, which I looked over and passed over the last time, might get onto this list. Uh, and now here, of course, we get into some big cards. Um, these are two cards that are not happening anytime soon. The, the, these two cards are sitting on this list. It's like, yeah, I'd love to have these cards. I don't see it happening. Um, but they're here. Uh, I have this Snyder. I got this Snyder earlier this year. Uh, here's a Barra. Rizzuto. I mean, who doesn't love 1952 tops? I really, really love the skill Hodges. Um, I mean, I know he's in the Hall of Fame now, but I loved this card before he got into the Hall of Fame. It's just a really cool-looking card, in my opinion. Um, Donnie Mize, great card. Got the Yankee Stadium freeze in the background, and he got all those bats in hand. And this is my absolute favorite Monty Irvin card. Monty Irvin has a lot of great cards, but I think this is... This is my favorite of his. And I got this card uh, this year, I think. Yeah, I think I got it this year. Leo the Lip. Got to have manager cards from all these great New York City managers. And this is my favorite DeRocher card. With the Giants. And Preacher Rowe, um, key member of the Dodgers. 
Andy Paco, he got to get the number one card. And, you know, Paf I've been reading a lot about Pafco um, over the past few months and his involvement with the shot heard around the world. I mean, he was on the field and watched the ball sail over the fence when Bobby Thompson hit that home run. Um, so I've got that in mind, too, when I'm looking at this card. Uh, Jerry Coleman. And the list goes on. I'm not going to go through the whole list um, unless you guys really, really want me to. But it's a mix of, you know, big cards, some some of which I may never get. Um, popular cards and then super obscure common cards that just jump out at me for whatever reason. Um, and what I really enjoy about building this particular um set is that it's entirely made up it's it's my own uh curated version of what i consider to be um some really fun cards that are all centered around this idea of new york city baseball in the 50s um and it's not you know it's it's a living breathing thing the the list will change and I, i'll never be done with it it's not but it's not about being done with it um you know f finishing the 53 set was really satisfying cuz it's like okay it's 160 cards when i get that final card it's done but with this it's like it'll just keep changing over the years and um it works because i'll never i'll never get tired of my fascination and, and appreciation for that era and for that that uh location i guess new york city when it comes to baseball so i know that i can keep going to that well so to speak and and i'll get something out of it oh, okay <laughs> i can't imagine why i need it let's let's take a look um 52 bowman yeah so we've got the Mick. We've got Willie Mays. This um, may be a controversial comment. This this might be my favorite Willie Mays card. Willie Mays has great cards, and I've got a couple of them. Uh, but I think this is my favorite Willie Mays card. I mean, I'm I'm a sucker for I'm a sucker for baseball cards with open sky and clouds in the background. And so this, <laughs> this one fits the bill. Um, Got to have Bobby Thompson. And of course, he's at the polo grounds and you got the American flag in the background. I mean, that's just classic. Don Newcomb, um, I asked, this was months ago, I asked a, uh, a text thread filled with YouTubers. Some of you guys are in here. Uh, so you might remember, I asked a text thread uh, of um, about Don Newcomb, like what were the what were their favorite cards of Newcomb, and it was because I was reading about Newcomb at the time in relation to the Branca Thompson story, and I was learning more about Newcomb because I, I mean, I you know, a lot of times with these vintage players, it's like you know them and you know the names, but when you start reading about them and they start to become real people, it's like, okay, it's not just a name and, and a bunch of stats that you start to sort of get to know them and they start to have more meaning to you. Uh, that was happening to me with Newcomb. And so I asked that chat thread for their favorite Newcomb cards. And this one kept coming up and I was looking at all the Newcomb cards. It's like, yeah, this one's great. This is a great, a great uh, example of Don Newcomb. Eddie Lopat, somebody mentioned, uh, somebody mentioned Vintage Sanctuary, and I think he may have shown this card. Um, and I, again, I've seen this card before. Many, many of you may have shown it at one point or another, but um, you never know. Sometimes the card just jumps out at you randomly, and this one jumped out at me, Eddie Lopat. Hank Bauer, another classic Yankee shot there. 
Carl Ferrillo, I just absolutely love that pose, but most especially, I honestly, I think it's the background where you see that um, the facade and the uh, the open design of the stadium in the background with the light coming through, and it almost kind of looks, you know, very cathedral-like um, with that sort of archway window. Um, Nina, I think you might have shown this card at one point, and it jumped out at me. Uh, Chuck Deering, somebody, uh, somebody on uh, Twitter um, posted this card a few weeks ago, and it just jumped out at me. I was like, this looks like, I don't know, it, it just looks like something that you could see on a museum wall. And I think that's it. That's it for 52 Bowman. But that, again, that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that I don't like any of the other 52 Bowman cards from New York City uh, players or teams. It just means that they haven't jumped at, jumped out at me yet. Um, and so I will either open up a book and look through them again and something will jump out of me or a YouTuber, Nina, you know, like yourself will show a card and I'll be like, why have I not uh, looked at that card before? Um, you know, a card that recently kind of jumped in my head that I'll share with you guys is not, it's a card that you guys all know. Um, Hold on one sec. It's this card. I've seen this card a few times over the past, I don't know, week or so. It's the 48 leaf um, orange spawn. You know, this, this is the card that I've seen many times before. I'm sure you guys have all seen it before. Um, and it just never really, you know, it's, it's not like I didn't like it. It just never really jumped out at me. But for some reason, I've seen it a few times recently, and it's like, you know, that is a really, really cool-looking card. And, I mean, of course, it's Warren Spawn, and Warren Spawn is an, an amazing player um, and a great part of of the game, uh, of the history of the game. And for some reason, it's just jumping out at me right now. Um, and it's not on my list, but I will probably end up putting it on my list. Um, obviously not on the New York list, but on my post-war list. Um, but it's not just because it's spawn. I mean, like, it can be a common, a common card can jump out at me, too, so... Yeah, that's true. I mean, Nina, any particular reason why why you have um, slowed down on the videos? I, I'd be willing to take a guess. Um, I'm sure that one of the hurdles is just the amount of effort that it takes, right? Um, sometimes making a video is just a lot of a lot of effort goes into it especially when you've got to like look up information and do some research and stuff it's it you know sometimes it is as simple as hitting record and just doing it other times depending on what you're trying to do with your video it does take a lot of effort and so it can be difficult to find the time or or the motivation cool um i i don't know if i'm like 100% obsessed with the spawn card yet but uh uh i definitely think i'm gonna put it on the list good to see you alan uh don you made a video recently that i need to catch i need to catch up on a lot of stuff there's been a lot of videos over the past week or two that i have not yet caught Um, I'm not just Terry. Is my North Terry? Yeah, Terry is a beast. Terry is uh, 
Terry is the beast of YouTube. Puts us all to shame. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to redouble my efforts and get back into making videos. Um, I mean, going live is fun, but uh, I do enjoy trying to put videos together. Um, well, guys, it's been about an hour. Um, I don't have to wrap up. If there's anything that anybody wants to chat about or if anybody wants to hop into the, to the stream, I'm happy to share a link. Or if there's any cards that you guys want me to look up, I know there are some other streams going on. So um, maybe it would be a good time to wrap up and uh, head over to some of those other streams. But if there's anything you guys want to get into, I know I've been going on and on. But nobody stopped me. Yogi Berra, action shot, 1952 Wheaties. Gotta love the catcher, catcher cards. Here's a random one, West Westrum from 1952 Red Man Tobacco. Just really like that image. I should mention, guys, uh, before I wrap up, um, if I can figure out where it is. Just one second. Uh, shoot. This is a good old fashioned, uh, awkward moment on Card Room Live. It's the real deal, guys. Oh, you know why? Because it's probably not in there. That's why. There we go. Uh, so I'm sure most of you guys know this Hobby Palooza is coming up. Uh, Hobby Palooza, for those of you that um, don't know, is an online event that sort of precedes the national. It was started a couple of years ago during COVID when the national couldn't happen. So uh, instead of not being able to go to the national and just leave it at that, um, a online event was created by Mike Moynihan and, and uh, bench clear media to get everybody together. Um, I've had the pleasure of doing a couple of, um, I don't know what you call them, uh, live events for hobby Palooza the past couple of years. I'm going to do it again this year. Um, I will uh, be sure to make an announcement uh closer to the to the event but hobby palooza is uh i believe it's saturday and sunday i'm not sure if it's friday to it um, i don't know if anybody in here knows but i i know at least it's saturday and sunday and it's pretty much an all day of all day affair both saturday and sunday and um there's a whole bunch of different events um all uh live stream events with different uh youtube folks from around the community and beyond um i don't know the full slate of who's participating i'm, I'm sure all that information is going to come out um shortly from bench clear but um my uh time slot is sunday night at 6 p.m uh eastern standard time so you can gather around the dinner table with family and and uh talk about vintage baseball cards with them. Um, so 6 p.m. Sunday, the 25th, uh, Card Room Live will not be Card Room Live. It'll be Hobby Palooza on Bench Clear Media. And um, as I've done in the past, uh, it's going to be an all vintage discussion. Uh, we like to call it Vintage is King because vintage is king. Um, and there'll be a number of special guests. Um 
uh, most of whom you guys know, Nina. Nina will be there, which is awesome. Uh, Brent from Near Mint Musings should be there. Doug from Decons Cardboard uh, will be there. And a newer YouTuber that perhaps some of you guys um, don't know, but you should know, is uh, going to be there. His name is uh, Dan, and he has a YouTube channel called Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. Um, I know Dan from Twitter, and he recently started a YouTube channel, but he's got an amazing collection he's been collecting for decades, and uh, I'm excited to have him on. And so we're going to be talking about vintage cards, as we always do. Um, and there's not necessarily a specific topic yet, um, but I'm excited because all the members of that group are, are great collectors and have uh, great personalities and opinions and it should be it should be a good time so i hope that you guys will um will check that out as well as all the other events that are going to be going on during hobby palooza including geez mikey what are you doing uh what are you doing for 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 hobby palooza mikey um I'd be curious to hear uh let's see yogi does have so many great cards um no because this is only new york cards um and i don't think i have anything on my wish list past the 70s yet but that doesn't mean it won't happen it'll it'll eventually happen um currently working on pride of the yankees movie project picking up autographs here and there just picked up walter brennan and i suppose very cool awesome currently the last spot to close the event i'll be doing set building talk awesome dude that's really cool good for you we definitely need somebody to talk about set building because set building is to me a cornerstone of this hobby and mikey you're such a good representative of that and um set building is awesome so i look forward to that Okay, uh, Scott's here, which means it's a good time for us to wrap this up. Um, thanks, everybody, <laughs> for, for coming. Um, you should totally go join some of the other uh, streams that are going on. Uh, I will stay if you guys want, um, but I need a topic. Um, I need a reason to stay because I'm tired. And I'm almost out of my adult beverage. This is my, uh, here, let me show you guys this. This is a really important glass. This is a vintage Phillies glass. And if you can see there, it's got Veterans Stadium just above the logo. And this is Yingling, by the way. So th this is, I mean, you can't get more on brand than, than right here. Cheers. You know, Rick, not everybody lives in Los Angeles. You, you know, contrary to popular belief, you guys are not the center of the universe. I'm sorry to say. Scout from Ranger Studios. <laughs> I mean, if I got my loop out and like really studied it, you know, you'd you'd see like Santa Claus getting hit by batteries and um, a jail cell and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you, you'd see Tommy Lasorda wrestling with the fanatic. There's a great question. Who should you paint this year for Hobby Palooza? I think the answer is Don um, Don Mossy, right? I mean, who else could you possibly paint? Did you have you already painted Don Mossy? I don't think you have. It's okay if he, if he was calling me a rat. Um, 
I can take it. I can I can take all of uh, Reese's punches. I mean, come on. How how is it that you've had your channel for this long? And you've been a Don Mossy super collector and you haven't painted Don Mossy. I mean, that's just absurd. And the national will be the perfect time to write that wrong. <laughs> Throwing at Babe Ruth. That's, a, that's an, an unforgettable image. Yeah, don't yeah, don't don't repeat yourself, Scott. You could paint that. Let's look at some 53 tops. And then we'll close this out. Mantle, Robinson, Maze. For a long time, I was, I was like on the fence about this Willie Mays card, which I'm sure would like shock some people and like alex what's wrong with you um because i think most people just automatically like this card i for some reason was just not really on board with this card and then i finally came around to it i can't explain that i don't i don't know guys i'm i'm weird i have <laughs> i have really uh difficult taste i guess but it's a really awesome card. I, 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 I got my head straight around this card. I love this card, Hank Thompson. Such a cool card. Um, Irv Lauren, I did a video about this card a few months ago. Um, random common card, but I love this card because it's one of the few cards that shows Yankee Stadium um really prominently in the background this is just a really eye-catching card i love the colors i love the no betting sign in the background another um manager card chuck dressing i like this one I mean, if I had to choose between the two dressing cards that I showed today, I'd, I'd, I would prefer his Bowman card where he's like pointing at the, the chalkboard. But I like this one too because it's got the, the stadium in the background and you see a little bit of the city as well. This card is just uh, eye-popping. I love this Bobby Morgan card. That's all the 53 tops I've got. True. Still over a thousand. Do you think it'll ever be below a thousand at this point? I mean, I'd be surprised. I've got an idea. Why well, don't Scott? I I hesitate to say this. 
why don't you paint Clemente and Usual and Don from Don's Field of Dreams cards? All three of them kneeling. Now that would be something. I'm not I'm not serious. In case you thought I was. Right. The, the one the one good thing about the economy tanking. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, it's been fun. Uh, thanks for jumping in everybody. Um, next time we do this, it'll be random again, but I will, uh, share the link. So if anybody wants to hop in and shoot the breeze, we'll do that next time. Um, so until then, I hope everybody has a great end of their weekend. Uh, happy father's day once again. And I uh, hope everybody takes care, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Good night. Toodles. <laughs>